May God bless you. So, the church is in dire times, and we should be concerned about the salvation of souls. So, I'm starting out on a very serious note there, because this is really the third take of me recording this video. I kind of got out of the habit of recording videos, making videos, and I felt like the last two were about 80% there. They weren't getting to the full message of what I wanted to get across with the urgency. And so that's why I started out like that. Hopefully, continuing along that theme will convey to you just how serious this matter is. The topic being bashfulness in prayer. So today, a lot of Christians, Christianity, vastly unpopular today. People are leaving the church day after day. The numbers are increasing. We are on the losing end in the culture conflict right now between the secular world and Christendom. The embers of Christendom. Those embers that are still burning. And they shine more brightly when they do appear. And so, last month, I saw, heard in person, that's the more important part, heard these two people, just regular people, but very convicted Christians. They spoke with a lot of conviction. And so that appealed to me very much so, me trying to improve in the spiritual life, just hearing these two people. They didn't have many special abilities or talents by worldly standards, but they were just people who said what they actually believed, and they lived by what they actually believe. Because if they didn't live according to their beliefs, they wouldn't be speaking so publicly and so authentically with such conviction about what, what they were talking about. And so, I think that comes from a strong prayer life. Prayer, of course, is the heart of the church itself. The monasteries and the convents, those are where most of the prayer is done. People spending their lives in solitude apart from the world. And I think that example, these monasteries are lights on a hill because... They reject the secular world in such a powerful manner. They show people in the world that it can be done, that people can actually reject all of those worldly temptations and desires and go live a life of prayer. So prayer should be of such great importance to us if we just want to carry our own mission out successfully in our daily lives. Again, that mission, going back to the beginning, is the salvation of souls. Again, because people are leaving the church, people are leaving most commonly because they don't have strong Christians around them. These fires, these fires... And people's hearts are going out because they're not able to be ignited by their families, by their communities, by their friends. So it's more important than ever to truly be inflamed with the Holy Spirit and just speaking truthfully as the Holy Spirit gives you those desires. And so we shouldn't be bashful at all. St. Jose Maria Escriba was talking about in his first book, uh, the most popular compilation besides the point, he was talking about how St. Paul and St. Francis, St. Anthony, all of these saints, they were great saints, they did great sa things, but he was saying that he wanted to do better things than them. And that's the attitude we should have. We should pray as if we are better Christians than St. Paul. Because these times really require it. The Roman persecutions were bad. The Jewish persecutions were bad. 
those were times where faith was not as widespread as it was in the Middle Ages. But we're really coming at the end of that curve there. Things are bad now, just look around. And so we have to live as true Christians in this time. We can't live that double life of living this worldly life out in public and living this Christian life when I'm at home in my bedroom or even with my family, but not actually living that faith out when you are out in public, out at Walmart, getting food for McDonald's. And the example I wanted to say there, that's why McDonald's came to mind, was because just how much I like to say, may God bless you whenever the McDonald's worker hands me whatever my order was, because that's just a small thing that we can do to proclaim the word of God out in public, to proclaim that Jesus is still Lord, even if the world does not accept him. And so, of course, we won't always be accepted, but we will spark curiosity. And that curiosity will make people curious, and that curiosity will lead people back to church. Especially, and it's counting on this point, if these Christians are living Christian lives, if they're living authentically Christian lives, that is the most attractive thing in the world to secular people, especially nowadays. As St. John Paul II, or Saint, uh, not Saint, but Pope Benedict, he'll be a saint one day, I'm sure. Pope Benedict, he said that people will come back to the church in droves even when they realize that Christianity offers them this better alternative to the loneliness, to the despair that they are currently living in. So the way we bring that about is prayer. We have to pray, God, convert my entire town back to Catholicism. How can I make that happen? God, convert my family back to Catholicism. How do I make that happen? So St. Augustine said that you have to pray as if everything depended on God, but act as if everything depended on you. Because God wants to work through us. God wants to give us his grace and power and let the Holy Spirit flow through us so that the glory will be his. So when we're successful with excellence, we succeed. That glory goes back to God. We should give it to God. We should attribute it, attribute it to God. When people say, why are you doing this all the time? Or my students will sometimes ask me at the school, they'll say, why are you smiling all the time? Because Jesus has risen and God is a good God. So may God bless you all.